My name is Chef Phil Jones with Pharmacy Food with Chef Rob Carr here. And today we're gonna to make miso mushroom soup with farro, which is one of our ancient grains, potatoes, and rocket, which you also know, um, it's arugula and all kinds of other things. But nice, tasty winter soup, really easy to make. While the ingredient list might be intimidating, the actual preparation of the soup is extremely easy. So one of the things we're gonna do is we're just gonna get a little bit of a head start and we're gonna get our pot going here and get some heat on it because we're gonna be sweating some vegetables, getting some flavors out and actually building up some layers of flavor. So with that said, some of our ingredients and we'll share the recipe with you. We've got some basic beer foie, which is onions, carrots, and celery. We've got some garlic. Uh, we've got some miso paste, fermented bean paste, with a lot of flavor, a lot of umami. We've got a little nutritional yeast, which is gonna add a little bit more umami. Kind of a little bit of a cheesy undertone, but we're really looking for that mouthfeel. We've got some fresh herbs here with some fresh thyme and some bay leaves. We've got our standard amount of spices here, crushed red peppers, salt, pepper, cracked pepper, white pepper, and we're gonna be finishing it off with a little vinegar and some other niceties. But at the center of all of our work today are our mushrooms. And so your recipe will be calling for some dried mushrooms and in advance of this, you're gonna be soaking your mushrooms, but retaining that liquid. Okay, so we got our, our wild mushrooms here, our dried porcinis, and we've got them hydrated. We're gonna be featuring those. We've got some fresh wild mushrooms and we've got some button mushrooms. So this is gonna form the the body of our soup today. So we have our standard mirepoix, which is onions, carrots, and celery. We also have some red onions and some shallots, and we're gonna get these items going for you here in one moment. As I said, we've preheated and we've got it going for you, and we're gonna get to going here. So we've got a little heat going on our pan, and we're gonna put in a little olive oil, generally, olive oil that we're using is, is extra virgin olive oil. One of the tips I like to give our folks though is if you're doing a lot of cooking and you don't want the expense of extra virgin olive oil, the minute you put heat on extra virgin olive oil is no longer extra virgin because extra virgin means that it is the first cold pressing of the olive oil. So with that, we're gonna take about three or four tablespoons of olive oil maybe a, a hair more, because so this is gonna be a larger preparation. And we're gonna start out our aromatics here. Our carrots, our onions, and our ratio for our mirepoix here is two onions to one carrot to one celery. There's our celery. In addition to our regular onions, we're adding a little bit extra flavor with some red onions, not quite as bitter as a standard white onion, a little bit of sweetness there, and then some shallots, um, little baby onions, but we're just really kind of layering on the flavor. If you want, you can actually add in some leeks. Uh, we think we've got a good mix going for us right now. We're gonna take a little bit of salt Salt is a diuretic, which means it's gonna leach out some of that liquid, which is water. Wherever there's water, there's no flavor because water is odorless and colorless and tasteless. And so we're just trying to really build on flavors while we're gonna be adding water later. We do wanna take it out of our vegetable matter here, which is also benefiting from this heat. Because we're gonna get some little bit of caramelization, little flavor off the pan, and we're gonna get that going for you. So as I spoke, said earlier, we're going to be using farro, which is one of our ancient grains, um, kind of resembles barley, nice nutty flavor. It's going to help reinforce the deep, rich flavor of our mushrooms and add a little extra layer of texture and make some things happen for you. While we've got that going, we're going to take and get our garlic ready. We don't need quite that much, but we're going to have a nice garlic butt punch to it. And we're gonna take it and we're just gonna cut it into fours. May sound a little persnickety and a little time consuming, but we've got a little time while that's sweating. Sweating the vegetables, 
sounds like it is. We're letting the liquid out of it. Once again, reinforcing the fact that where there's water, there's no flavor. And so we want to make sure that we're maximizing our flavor base. I remember as a young chef working at the Rattlesnake with Jimmy Schmidt, that was always at the center of our work, making sure that we layered flavors and made sure there were levels of flavors all through the dish. Making sure that each individual ingredient melted with the dish, but also at the same time you could taste each individual ingredient, which is seems a little impossible, but it actually happens. And I'm just getting the garlic ready because it's a little early to add the garlic because we want to make sure we get all that liquid out of those vegetables and we don't want our garlic to burn in the meantime. But that's sitting there ready to go. While we're doing this, I'm going to talk to you about this little packet here. It's an ugly little ball of cheesecloth, but it actually has some sprigs of thyme in there, some bay leaves. You can make it pretty, but it's really not necessary. You just want to make sure that the thyme and your bay leaves don't invade your food dish. If you can hear that nice sizzle, you want to make sure that your vegetable matter has a little bit of oil on it. We don't want a ton of it because we don't want all that extra fat, but we want to make sure that there's enough fat on there that is making connection with the pot and your actual vegetable. And if you can see it here right now, you can smell all this wonderful flavor that's coming and developing. Um, the big one. Yeah, that's satisfying to show folks. And as you'll see here, if you want to focus in on a little bit, come in a little on your video. You're starting to see that the onions are becoming translucent. Carrots and the celery are starting to soften. We're going to take this a little bit further. A little bit of, of caramelization on there. Caramelization is a, 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 a sort of browning, but it's not as fast as just browning something. You want to take your time and not force it. This is coming along nicely. And some of the other ingredients that you'll see here today, we've got liquid aminos, which is a wonderful uh, vegan, non-soy way of putting in the flavor of soy sauce. I use, personally, I use Bragg's liquid aminos. You can use other flavors, other varieties of this, but it's a wonderful one. Miso paste, fermented bean paste, Lots of flavor. This is a flavor bomb. This is one of my favorites. This is Miso Boom. It, it is an actual brand and it's got great flavor. And I chose this one today. They're white misos, red misos. There's all sorts of different misos. But I chose this one because it actually real it enhanced the flavor of the mushrooms. Now you want to keep this stirred and move it around, but not too much. Um, my wife does the moving around too much and doesn't like the food cook. We call it being pokey, but we want to make sure we want to minimize the amount of time we're moving around so it actually gets the job done with it making the contact with the bottom of the pot. One of the other things we're going to be adding in here is our tomato paste. We're using a really nice, high quality tomato paste. One of the tricks with tomato paste is that you want to make sure that you fry it. You're going to actually intensify the flavor. When you fry it a little bit, fry it a little bit more. When you fry it a little bit more, fry it a little bit more, and you're gonna notice that there's an intensity of flavor that's gonna develop. And that's gonna go in sort of around the same time as the garlic, maybe a little bit after. Like I said, don't be intimidated because there are a bunch of ingredients. This is a one of those, take your time, get it right, enjoy it, share it with your friends and family, share it with your neighbors. One of the things I like to encourage people is to share food because with slow food, one of the things that we say, 
meal shared is a story told. So we need to take care of our, our neighborhood, our family, and actually get outside of ourselves and become a little bit more engaged in a meal is a perfect way to start that conversation. Okay, we're gonna add in our garlic at this time. We're getting a nice little bit of color there. And we're not afraid of our garlic burning. Don't wanna drop in all the other ingredients, but we're gonna be using that anyway, so don't worry about it. Now the pan is getting a little bit dry. But like I said, we don't want to add too much oil at this point in time because we want to kind of avoid that fat. One of the things that's very consistent with fat, fat is fat, and fat generally has about 120 calories per tablespoon. So we want to make sure that we're being aware of that. Handy dandy computer that's uh, shut down on me. Let's get it back up here. Yeah. We're getting ready to add our tomato paste. And our recipe calls for pour in a cup of tomato paste. Going right in there. Smashing around the bottom of the pan so it's getting some heat that's doing all that frying we were talking about. And we're hoping that we don't need a little bit of help from our local fire department here because of the smoke. But this is where all this flavor is developing. And we'll be past this portion of this in just a moment. Because we're getting ready to add the star of our show, our mushrooms. Those flavor bombs that you love so much. Ooh. We're going to put in our rehydrated mushrooms. We're going to put in our wild mushrooms, the sliced ones. And we're going to put in our button mushrooms, which we simply quartered. I'm going to throw them right in now. Clean up here a little bit. Clean in as we go. Move some things around. Makes our life a little bit easier. And then one of the things you're going to notice is that you're going to hear a dry pan. You're not going to have that sizzling that you had. So we're going to add a hair more of olive oil. Like I said, still trying to avoid those issues. Still frying that tomato paste, developing those flavors. Just a hair, so we hear that nice high pitch sizzle a little again. And looking at my recipe, because every now and then I actually have to do that, we're going to take and add a little bit of heat. Get your circulating, get your buds to circulate them in a little bit. I'm going to add just a couple of flakes of red crushed red pepper flakes. And so this liquid that we have here, this is a liquid left over from actually soaking those mushrooms earlier. And we're going to put this in, we're going to deglaze our pan and get some of these wonderful flavors off of it get our process going. Now, I'm going to make an admission. It's the first time we've made this recipe. Don't know how it's going to turn out. Don't have all the measurements together. But this is the joy of cooking. We're experimenting. We're trying some things out. We know we have a base idea of what we want to do with this. We're going to work through that. And we're going to make it happen for you. So we deglaze bottom of the pan, getting all those little burnt bits off. That's where all that extra flavor is. And the tomato paste has been on there frying. It's got a little extra love in there. And we're gonna make this go from here. So, one of the things that we don't know, is we actually don't know how much water we need to put in there. And so we've got a little pot of water going and a little bit extra liquid. A wonderful little bonus I did not know about. And we're going to let this actually dry up a little bit. Not to the point where it's crusty back up on the bottom again, but to the point where we're getting all the stuff that was already on the bottom of the pan off of here, off the bottom of the pot. 
intensify these flavors. And one of the things that's happening now is we're cooking the mushrooms, they're exuding their own liquid, so it's also helping to deglaze the bottom of the pan. So how are we smelling so far? Delicious. <laughs> right. Absolutely delicious. I guess it is. Okay, so we're almost dry on the bottom there, and we'll add uh, water in a moment. It's still exuding liquid, so we're not going to go overboard with the water. We want to make sure we have enough water to help hydrate, soften, and cook our farro, depending on how you like your farro, how tender, or to the tooth, or whatever, al dente. That determines how long you cook it, how much water you're going to have in the pot, because obviously it's going to absorb some of that liquid and all these wonderful flavors. And that's almost dry again. Like I said, we don't want it too dry. We're going to probably add a couple of pots of water like this, ultimately. So, got this first one going here. We're going to give me a little bit more water, and like I said, we're guessing on the recipe. The recipe stands now. We're going to add about a cup of farro. This is a good time to get it in there because we're going to need about 20 25 minutes, as I explained a little bit earlier. So what we're basically boiling up here is a hopped up mushroom barley soup. Obviously no barley, it's a farro, very similar. Still wonderful nuttiness. We know that this farro is going to take a little bit more time to cook than the potatoes, so we got that going first. We have our bouquet garni, a little fancy flavor bag. We're going to get that in there and allow for that to start cooking. Cheesecloth is probably one of my favorite things to have at home. Obviously for cooking, um, I need some sauce work. Uh, in the same cooking thing, I strain other stuff. We'll leave that to your imagination, but we strain stuff and use this kind of um, cloth on a lot of occasions. I'll actually have a preparation that I'll take call fat or French lace, wrap a piece of meat or a force meat, and then I'll cheesecloth it for its cooking process to help hold it all together. There's a lot of different applications for cheesecloth. There's craft products, projects that you can use it for. So just go out, grab some cheesecloth. Some great places you can go but right here. People's on Gratiot, wonderful family. Of course, these have owned this space for generations. And this is about local. It's not just about the ingredients, but it's about the community that we're in. Go over there and, and, and talk to Dante and the crew and just get some wonderful equipment and some tools and some advice from these folks because they're neighborhood professionals. And it's not just for pros. You can go in there and get some household items and things that you never would think that you could use, but you could definitely use it, and you're also keeping these dollars inside of our city. So, we are cooking here. We've got it going. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to let you get a little peek of what it looks like. We'll pour this extra oil off. You can see it clearly through the side of the measuring cup. You notice that it has a rich color to this, and that's all that flavor that comes from the soaking liquid. It's coming from the tomato product that's on the bottom. It's all that fun that's on the bottom of the pot that we're releasing off of it with the liquid, and that's all flavor. So, with that said, we're gonna take a little bit of a break here and let this cook for about 10, 15 minutes, and we'll come back. When the world is uncertain, having a focus can make everything clear. At Gallagher, our focus is community. It's a simple word that can mean many things. The places where we live and work, 
the industries where we do business, and the new connections we form around new ways of interacting. As your community insurance broker and consultant, Gallagher's purpose is to help you move forward with confidence by managing your risk, by helping you foster a healthy, thriving workforce, by holding ourselves to the highest standards of ethics, and by bringing together global reach and local expertise to help your business, your community, through every challenge you face. So whether your doors never closed or you're looking to return and rebuild, our focus remains where it's always been, on you and your community. Because that's what it means to build confidence together. Well, welcome back. Um, once again, Chef Phil Jones, Pharmacy Food, and today we're making miso mushroom soup with farro, potatoes, and a little rocket. Um, so, when we last left you, we had our farro going in and we got it cooking. So, the total cook time is for that 20 to 25 minutes, depending on how you want it in terms of the texture. And we're not expecting it to be done yet because we have another major addition to make, and that's our potatoes. And we're also going to be adding in a little fresh baby spinach, some of our leafy greens in there to add another component to it. So, with that said, let's get a couple cups of potatoes in. And, like I said before, we're guessing on some of this stuff. Which is okay because we can. And it doesn't matter if I get a little bit of water in there, whether it's, they're sitting in here soaking some of that starch out. Because I can control the cooking process by cooking more of that liquid out. But I'm going to drain a little bit, see if we've got enough in here make this delicious. I'm feeling like a couple more potatoes. The recipes are guidelines. In some cases, like baking, you've got to be more precise, but we're, we're trying to do now. We're just trying to have fun, make this meal time go a little bit quick for us. It's not complicated, but it's going to be ultimately flavorful with mushrooms, giving us all that umami. Uh, Japanese scientists discovered this sixth taste and it's called mommy so this has a nice little mouth feel to it you can taste it in the back of your mouth and the flavors kind of linger so our potatoes should take about 10 to 12 more minutes so we're gonna let those do their thing in here and we'll come back shortly We're going to do one more clap test. Whenever you are ready. Okay. Yep, because it's going. So whenever you're ready, we can do one more clap test. And we're ready to go. All right. Uh, once again, I'm Phil Jones, Chef Phil Jones from Pharmacy Food. And today we're making miso mushroom soup with farro, potatoes, and rocket. And so what we've done so far, we sweated off our aromatics, we've added some garlic in there, we fried up our tomato paste, we put some heat on our mushrooms, we used the liquid that we reserved from our straining of the dried mushrooms. We've got our carrot selling onion here, obviously, a little crushed rubber, red pepper, and now we're gonna start really turning it up and adding some great bold flavors in here. And this first one is our fermented paste, our miso boom. And so we're gonna put a couple tablespoons of miso boom in there just to get it started. So we're gonna about a quarter cup and see how that does for us. And you notice we haven't added any sodium in here yet because we wanna make sure that we don't overdo it. Get that miso melting in here using the side of the pan to get it all smushed up and evenly distributed. And then you also be able to see once I show you at the end, 
is also going to add a little bit of thickness to it. And then I don't know if you all can smell the change in the aroma here with the addition of the miso, but it's happening. And we're going to add a few other things in here, and this mostly peppers. We're going to add a little cracked black pepper, a little regular black pepper grind, and then a little white pepper. They all have slightly different attributes and slightly different contributions to the party. A little crack, you're going to get a little texture every now and then, now and then a little bite. Our normal pepper, just a little hair, and then a little bit of our white pepper. Um, some folks says it has a little bit of spiciness to it, but not to be, it's just a slightly different peppery flavor. Get that all stirred in there. And we're gonna add another one of our little stars, and this is some fresh baby spinach. And add that in for our leafy green vegetable matter. And it's also gonna add a little bit of liquid, but that's okay, I'm gonna get it nice and wilted as we incorporate it into the dish. And this is a nice way of sneaking in some green leafy vegetables for our family members who are not really in tune to all that and kind of want to shy away from it. But what we can do is we can increase our vegetable intake by hiding it in other ingredients, other dishes and such. So for our kids, our young folks that aren't big spinach fans, this might be a good way to get them to eating some of these leafy greens. And you don't have to stick with spinach. Uh, you could use kale, um, which there's multiple types here in Detroit. Uh, dino kale is really popular. Um, you'll find it in a lot of our local gardens. Uh, we have an organization called Keep Growing Detroit, which has over 1,600 registered gardens in the city of Detroit. Largest initiative of this kind anywhere in the world. Uh, the belief there is that Detroiters can grow 51% of their fruits and vegetables right inside the city limits. So you can go there for $10, a family can actually get plants, seeds, tool share, um, instruction, community around potlucks, and just a wonderful array of resources if you wanna grow some of your own food. If you have a church or you wanna get adventurous and start your own market garden, that's only 20 bucks a year. 100 or so plants, couple hundred types of different seeds and like I said the community around all of that is what makes it extremely extremely helpful because there are other people that are like-minded out there that will share that information with you so we're coming down towards the end and we're gonna give this a little bit of a taste because we're gonna have to adjust our seasoning you may notice we didn't add any salt there's a couple things that you can do you can use a nice vegetable base it has some other vegetable flavors. You kind of want to double down on it. It's not necessary for us because we cooked all these wonderful ingredients in here already. We're going to use some wonderful sea salt, kosher salt. Also the sea salt. You'll also see there at one point in time. Don't fool, get fooled. Use a high quality salt. We want to make sure that you understand the difference between a pressed salt or evaporated salt. Pressed salt, you're going to have more sodium per tablespoon, so you want to avoid those kinds of things. Nice salt that you use is Malden salt, which is a, a, an evaporated salt. Alisi is an Italian sea salt. Just go with high quality. Salt is not the enemy. It's poor salt. It's bad salt. The salt in that little blue round container, that's bad salt because all the calcium and magnesium has been removed from it. And those are the things that our bodies actually need to regulate blood pressure. So don't be afraid, just be judicious. Don't allow other people to season your food. Cook for yourselves. That way you can be guaranteed that you're not gonna overdo it. So we're gonna take a little taste. Excuse me. Is that burnt out already? Hot too. That's what happened. Got overheated. 
fault because of yeah. So this was covering. not a problem. Got it. Pretty much done. Okay. So we're just gonna put some final seasoning on it. I know we need some salt. Okay. A bit rough. Do you know we need a little bit more regular pepper. We're going to be adjusting that. We're also going to add a little apple cider vinegar for a little bit of sharpness at the end. A little bit of the liquid aminos, which is our soy sauce replacement. And I'm feeling like a hair more on the miso. Get that miso stirred in there, distributed. Flavor. We are then going to I need an empty container. We're going to remove our bouquet garni. It has done its job. Now we're going to just a little bit of this nutritional yeast. Tablespoons of do it. I think we're about there. We're going to dish up a bowl and let you all try some. So we didn't add any roux or any thickener or anything, but you see this is nice and hearty. And I sound like I need some food. A little bit of this fresh arugula on top for a nice little fresh hit. Sesame seeds. A little bit of sesame oil. What am I? Thank you. This is a little toast of sesame oil. Like I said, 120 calories, so we don't need a lot. A little bit of sumac. Sumac is it can be found a lot of places. We grow it here actually in Michigan. Michigan being the second most agriculturally diverse state in the United States. So we got a little sumac. A little crusty bread from our little friends at Avalon. We're over traffic jam and snug where they make some wonderful cheeses. And you've got dinner.